You're in the Stampede, West Virginia Metro News only show dedicated exclusively to the Thundering Herd. Here's your host, Dave Wilson. We are back, finally. I wish I could say I was off all that time in between uh, the episode before Christmas and uh, our current one this week, but I wasn't. I had a couple days off, enjoyed Christmas, enjoyed New Year, uh, New New Year's, New Year. And uh, back in the saddle today, and boy, do we have a lot to talk about. A lot going on over the past week uh, surrounding both Marshall football and the men's basketball program, both good, bad, ugly, and uh, not shocking uh, in many facets. Tony Peterson leaves the football program. Uh, The football program reportedly hiring a new defensive coordinator. Marshall basketball hitting rock bottom at Ohio, then bouncing back against Tulsa. Wednesday night, picking up its first conference win of the season. So to bring in some perspective on all that has gone on over the past week and to let us know his take and uh, point of view on the issue is the host of the statewide, uh, not statewide sports line. Wow, Paul, I almost, almost credit you with the statewide sports line. And now you may never come on the show again. Uh, no, that's fine. I would uh, I would be honored to uh, to fill in one day for Mr. Caridi. Uh, yeah. if, if 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 you know he could find the room for me in that entourage <laughs> that surrounds that show, I, I would I would definitely uh, I would definitely be uh, be open to uh, discussing Marshall athletics <laughs> on the statewide sports line, the Insider Sports Line uh, host and a contributor to the Herd Insider, Paul Swan, joining us here on the Stampede. All right, Paul, let's talk basketball. First, things couldn't have got any worse for the Thundering Herd in Athens, Ohio, an embarrassing loss to the Bobcats. So it was not shocking when many were um, a little pessimistic heading in, heading into the Tulsa game at the Cam Henderson Center Wednesday night. But with DeAndre Kane fully back, Marshall turned out a performance that everyone expected Marshall to turn out all season long. I think the difference you saw with Marshall's win last night was the fact that you had a guy who was able to run the offense, get the scorers in position, and and it seemed like it was a more cohesive unit out there. Uh, Marshall has had um, some success with Tulsa. Of course, you remember that uh, epic struggle they had in the Conference USA tournament last uh, season. So, you know, these two teams had uh, some business to take care of with each other. Uh, and you thought you were going to get a close game. Not the case. And a lot of that's because uh, you had uh, Dre Kane back, and he, he definitely gave this team uh, leadership, cohesiveness. I mean, there's so many things that he does that you just can't replace. What will it take for you to believe that this team has turned a corner and turned things around in conference play? Um, it's going to take consistency. Yeah, they, I just can't say that with this great victory over uh, Tulsa, that they're back. I'm not going to go down that path. But what I do believe is with uh, uh, DeAndre Kane back, I mean, you hadn't seen this lineup with Dennis Tennant, Nigel Spikes, Dee Dee Scarver, Elijah Pittman, and DeAndre Kane. You haven't seen that lineup since the West Virginia game. And and that was uh, one time that you kind of felt okay after the the Mountaineer loss. You thought, well, this team could be competitive in Conference USA. They should be. Conference USA is pretty weak right now. And luckily for Marshall, they were able to get this opener, beat Tulsa, beat them soundly. And it was easy to talk a few people off the ledge this afternoon <laughs> uh, because of the fact that, you know, this is not where people thought Marshall would be. And I, I think that's uh, the angst is, is still there. But I think this is a good start. That was a must win last night for Marshall. They had to have that game. Uh, you hate to put that much pressure on a conference opener, but you know you would have had a, a four-game losing streak going into UTEP if you would have lost uh, your conference home opener. Do you think the program? I don't. You don't want to accuse players of ever giving up. But do you think it would have been pretty much throwing in the towel had they lost that game last or, or Wednesday night? Um, I don't think they threw in the towel. I just don't think that they were cohesive mm-hmm. and. Um, if you if you were in the post game last night, you heard the players talk about how um, there were no agendas for that game. And I think they they realize you know what were some of the things that were holding them down. You know, players weren't worried about getting their points; were worried about getting their touches. 
Uh, and again, with uh, DeAndre Kane in the lineup, I think some of that goes away because he's directing traffic. He's making sure everybody is uh, getting in position to be effective. And you know, we haven't even touched on uh, one player leaving the uh, Thundering Herd team uh, in uh, Kelvin Mayo. But it was really telling when you heard in the post game last night that they talked about you know, there were no agendas. And you know, I'm not. I'm not trying to uh, insinuate that there was an agenda with uh, Kelvin and Mayo, but the team found some focus quick, and I think a lot of that's on uh, DeAndre King. Do you think the heat being put on Tom Harrion this season, is it warranted for a guy who's put uh, together consecutive 20-win seasons? Uh, yes, it is warranted, because he's the head coach of the Marshall University basketball team, and all the focus, good and bad, uh, should be directed on him. Uh, he's the guy ultimately uh, responsible. Now, is he the guy that can go out there and make the free throws for the team? No. Is he the guy that can go out and make the shots for the team? No. But you know, would you rather have the heat on the players and distracting them, or would you rather put it on Tom Harrion and you know, have it you know be something he deals with? He can deal with that heat and that pressure a lot more than these players, and you know. He's making it a focal point on him. He apologizes for you know this team not being prepared, or he apologizes for uh, their performance. You know he's taking that upon himself, and that's you know that's how Tom Herian operates. You know you don't want to put it on the players. You don't want to direct it towards those guys. Some coaches can do that. Some coaches can call players out. I think Tom Herian's doing you know, what he needs to do by keeping all the heat on him. And, and keeping this team unified. You, you heard in the locker room in the post game last night, the players were like, hey, stop beating up our coach. He's not the one who's the problem. We're the problem. Stop you know, you know, beating our coach up. Talking with Paul Swan, host of the Insider Sports Line, also writes for the Herd Insider. Uh, talking Paul Swan, Hunt Thundering Herd Hoops. Also, Paul, this week, football making news with some coaching staff changes first tony peterson leaves the program what was the fan reaction on your show to the news that peterson was leaving to go to louisiana tech um i don't think it was hot or cold right now because you know we haven't got the official word yet uh, still we're we're waiting for that and so everything is in the sources uh mode right now sources have confirmed or sources are reporting but with that, so there's some there's some angst just a little bit because you saw the performance that Raheem Cato had uh, this season. Defensively, Marshall uh, was abysmal, but offensively, we saw some great performances. I hope that continues, and uh, you've got a great quarterback to uh, to build that foundation on. You just got to get the right personnel in there, and I think Marshall can do that. I'm, I'm not that concerned with offense uh, as you know, opposed to defense. That's where the the true problem was for this team last season. I think I would be more worried if Cato were going into his sophomore season than his junior campaign. Solid sophomore, now this guy is going to be what I would consider a veteran college quarterback, two years as a starter. He knows what it takes to win. He knows what it's going to take to be successful versus a guy that's still learning to play college football. He's had that foundation. I think he'll be just fine uh, no matter who you put in place to help him and bring him along the next two years. And that goes for Blake Fronapple as well. Yeah, I don't think the uh, the offensive side of the ball is uh, as devastated uh, with Tony Peterson leaving. And that's not a slight on Tony Peterson. I just think they have some capable coaches on that offensive side of the ball that, you know, with the right personnel uh, selection here or there, shuffling a couple of positions, you know, maybe you bring someone in new, you know, whatever you need to do to shore that side of the ball up. But a couple of years ago, uh, fans were calling for Bill Legg's head. <laughs> now uh, the man can't do any wrong. So, you, you know, their uh, their temperament changes, and I think you got to give Marshall credit offensively. Uh, you know, and it wasn't just for Keen Cato, but they offensively, were very successful at that position. They were fun to team to watch last year. I don't think that's going to uh, change. Uh, it's it's going to be maybe a little bit different with Peterson's absence, but at the same time, I think Marshall's okay there. Talking with Paul Swan, writes for the Herd Insider, also the host of the Insider Sports Line on WRVC in Huntington. Uh, reports out today that the Herd will hire the former defensive coordinator at Temple, Chuck Heater, to replace Chris Rippon as the defensive coordinator at Marshall. Uh, still waiting on official word, but that is pretty solid, Paul. Not going to ask whether you like the hire or not, but how much pressure will be on him in 2013? Uh, 
it's going to be immense. It, it's not just him. It's Doc Holliday. Uh, the team did not make postseason. You know, they make postseason the, uh, the year before, and so uh, they've taken a step backwards as far as not getting um, the team into a bowl. I think that's going to change with the um, reshuffling of Conference USA. Uh, hopefully Marshall will be moving forward, so uh, there's some positives there. But on the defensive side of the ball, Marshall could have, if they just had a uh, a more sound defense, could have uh, won a few more games uh, than they uh, than they lost. Well, That's just you know plain and simple. The the defense, uh, I think, really at times uh, cost Marshall several games because Marshall was scoring enough points to win. Well, I think you can go back to. You can go beyond even a half dozen plays. You can go to third and fourth down conversions that teams made in the fourth quarter on the last drive. Uh, that was the difference in the season. Paul, I wrote maybe back in December, it was after Chris Ribbon resigned, that this was going to be a make-or-break hire for Doc Holliday. He's lost that buffer now uh, between coordinators. The offense is uh, was performing and should perform uh, just as it did in 2012, as it is in 2013. The defense coordinator, the problem, now you're going to bring in a new guy, your guy. Uh, do you agree that this is a make-or-break hire for Holliday? Um. Yeah, I think it is make or break. It's not uh, It's not that you bring in a new staff and you've got the honeymoon period. The honeymoon period is over. And, Certainly. Um, I, I don't think that you would see this season being the the make or break, but uh, this could definitely uh, lead to future success or future failure. Um, this is going to be the most scrutinized hire uh, of Doc Holliday's uh, career, and it's because – it's the biggest gaping hole uh, for the Marshall football team right now. And uh, he said a few months ago, um, when the offense was having trouble, you know, he uh, he fixed the offense because they they're fixing things, they're taking things, I guess, one thing at a time. And the offense was you know completely broken a couple of seasons ago. Mm-hmm. And they fixed that. Now they got to fix the defense. And you know, he's your head coach, so you've got to trust him to make the uh, the right decisions. But with that said, um, yeah, the pressure is going to be on him because if he doesn't make the right decisions, I think you're going to start losing the fan base, and you start losing the fan base, and you start you stop losing money. You know, when you stop, you know, start losing money, you get uh, people's attention, and then you, know, you see what happens with uh, with college programs, especially at this level. And Marshall you know, cannot uh, afford to. You know, Marshall doesn't really have that much room for uh, margin of error. They they have to. You know, put together consistently a winning program or you're going to lose the fans. Well, if we learned anything from Wednesday night, Paul, winning fixes everything. Simply exactly. win that's, and everybody will be happy. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Winning will cover up problems. Winning will you know make everyone happy. And you know, the more successful your program is, the more your, your fans and your alumni feel better, the more they feel better, the more they're going to contribute to the program, and uh, it, it repeats itself. Uh, I, I think Marshall's schedule sets itself up to be a you know a, a winnable schedule conference USA looks like a league that Marshall should be competitive in and you know you build the program from there it's 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 not an easy process uh, when you are at a level that Marshall is uh, with with your resources it's, it's not talent it's not coaching all those things can be brought in it's you know the resources to get that talent or to to get the right coach in. I mean, Marshall does not have the athletic budget to compete with most of the schools currently in Conference USA. It's going to be a little bit better when you know, Marshall uh, is um, you know, going to probably maybe middle of the pack a little higher with the new uh, configuration compared to some of these schools. Which, by the way, not to not to self promote, but a uh, great story a couple weeks ago in the Herd Insider really outlining how much Marshall spends compared to the uh, the current members of Conference USA and the new members, and it's it's pretty shocking. Well, maybe if you got your checkbook out, Paul, you could uh, help the uh, cause a little bit there, huh? <laughs> uh, what's a checkbook? I work in radio, Dave. <laughs> He's Paul Swan. He's the host of the Insider Sports Line on WRVC and Huntington contributor contributor to the Herd Insider. Paul, thanks for joining us. Where can we follow you on Twitter? Uh, at Paul Swan, P A U L S W A, and, and uh, love to have as many people follow as possible. Uh, it's an eclectic uh, Twitter feed. You'll get a lot of Marshall sports. You'll get a lot of me and uh, my fascination with pop culture. So uh, yeah, follow at your own peril. 
Paul Swan. Thanks for joining us on the Stampede, Paul. Dave, always a pleasure. All right, we will be back next week, and hopefully some of these hires will be official by then. For Tyler Mertens, my producer, Paul Swan, my guest, thanks for watching. See you next time.